So welcome everyone, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining. So my name is Daniel, and today we, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, securing serverless function with the Quarkus Kubernetes extension. Uh, you guys, uh, some experience to develop some application? Are you developer or? Oh, cool. And then, have you heard about the Quarkus before? Really? <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. So. Yeah, and just a little bit uh, of myself. My name is Daniel. I'm working for Red Hat, a technical marketing major, and then like a developer advocate, uh, specialized cloud native runtime like Quarkus and Spring Boot and Node.js, and a little bit uh, try to give some more time to integration, some REST, and uh, some Smash uh, to Kubernetes because I am a CNCF ambassador as well uh, to evangelize a lot of uh, Kubernetes thing uh, with developers and DevOps engineer and a lot of stuff. Here's my contact information, like a Twitter and my YouTube channel and my uh, published book and the Git repo, etc. Just feel free, steal whatever you need. So let's get started. So at the very beginning, in uh, almost uh, 10 years, more than 10 years, like a 2016, actually, at a time, the Amazon Lambda uh, unleashed up the world to provide uh, serverless capability. At a time, like a, uh, no more company uh, needed, needed to buy the big jump of the, uh, uh, the physical server, virtual machine, something like that, to run application for your business requirements. So serverless. Uh, that's not actually serverless. You probably know it's a server full in some area like Amazon's data center or Google, something like that. But for developer perspective, they don't need to worry about infrastructure layer. Just uh, develop your application code and deploy it, and that's it. And the other, all rest of the thing will take care of by SaaS platform like Amazon Lambda. And after that, a few years later, more and more enterprise company jump into the, the market. Because this is a one of the good proof. This is not a one-time happening. So a lot of company, like a big enterprise company, a startup company, even open source project in the community jump into the market. Like uh, IBM Cloud and Google Function and Azure Function and serverless.com and recently uh, Kubernetes Knative. So how to get started if you really wanted to design or develop serverless functions, and uh, where is the right place to start your application architecture based on serverless capability. Maybe uh, you can go to CNCF landscape. I don't want to say uh, I am CSF ambassador, that's why I promote this one, but this is a really good place. There are so many tools like platform and frameworks, even manage the platform and then uh, also manageable on your hand. And also, there are a lot of uh, security compliant issues. So whenever you design or develop microservice architecture and Microsoft's application, you always think about security, how to authenticate, authorize your Microsoft API, uh, how to handle that, like, a, for example, as a part of a DevSecOps, you always think about uh, how to integrate your security capability or feature as part of your DevOps pipeline. That was one of the big responsibility of the QA team or system administrator team, but now it's uh, one of the uh, big duty of developers. So now when you have some chance to design or develop serverless functions, with the Java technology or even another language platform, you already always think about and consider what kinds of technology, what tools, frameworks should be considered for your uh, serverless function application. So problem is too many choices in this landscape. So for me, uh, I am developer advocate, but sometimes I really more spend a lot of time to uh, develop application uh, as a just normal developer. And then whenever I try to uh, start a new project, I try to find out the right 
tools, the right project in open source communities. But when I go to here, and uh, there are a lot of tools and the framework and open source project, and then sometimes I spend a lot of time to figure out which one is uh, appropriate to my cases. So this is a uh, common issues for IT decision maker or IT readers or developer team lead. So we need something different to uh, fix these issues or solve this problem. So a little bit more for developer perspective rather than uh, IT uh, ops team. So I'm going to stop uh, the presentation and let me uh, write into the RIBE demo how it works. And then today I'm going to showcase Quarkus and in terms of how do you develop serverless function with the Quarkus framework. So Quarkus is just new Java framework, uh, like a Spring Boot. So it's uh, not uh, app server, it's not uh, the, like a heavyweight middleware, just a Java framework, and then totally 100% open source project. You can actually use that, but it's a little bit more focused on cloud native and Kubernetes native, we can say, as you see here is one of my favorite hashtag Kubernetes native Java stack, because Quarkus was born since Kubernetes unleashed upon the world. So there are still, we have a lot of uh, cloud native Java stack, like a Spring Boot and Kotlin and uh, something more, but this all language platform and framework were born both for Kubernetes, which means there are still uh, some kind of gap to optimize your Java framework, even not Java. Like, uh, that's why a lot of developers really uh, choose Go or Node.js for developing a serverless function rather than Java technology. But here the question is, there are more than 15 million Java developers around the world, and then the last of last of enterprise business application already developed based on Java technologies. And what if, what if you could use the same Java technologies and stack for your uh, advanced uh, serverless or service mesh uh, application development? It would be awesome. So that's why Quarkus focus on that uh, point. So I'm going to start presentation here. So this is a terminal window. So there are actually multiple ways to create or scale for new uh, Java project, like a go to Spring Boot, like a Spring Initializer. You can just select some of the dependency and then just download the zip file and unzip and then open that uh, project, your prepare ID tool, like an IntelliJ, VS Code, something like that. That's uh, what you are doing uh, usually. But I'm going to use a uh, new command line. So KN is the Kubernetes native uh, command line. The K native is one of the uh, prime build pack, I mean, the, to manage or develop design your uh, Microsoft application as a serverless. We can call that KNAV serving on Kubernetes. So that's why KNAV and the KNAV command line actually includes a function capability. It's still a little bit early stage, so we can call that KNA func. And then you can actually KNA func, and then you can have a, a, a few uh, command line here. So like a create your new function project, and then delete to deploy and build a lot of steps. So I'm going to use just two command line today. You can actually do more, but I'm going to try to showcase how simply you can generate serverless function project first and then deploy into Kubernetes cluster. It's a pretty fundamental one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, basic stuff, but it's still worth uh, running your serverless function experience today. So I'm going to create to use the first uh, function, knfunc, create and then the function name like a Quarkus, let's say Quarkus func, and then uh, select the runtime. So Knative function capability actually provide multiple runtime like a Java and JavaScript and Go, Python, and Node.js, TypeScript, etc. But today I'm going to use Quarkus and 
That's it. Once it was created, and then you have uh, automatically created your project under this directory. So once you go to Quarkus Phone, and then you can find this is a Maven project. So the, uh, we have some plan to generate Gradle as well, but at this moment, we have only Maven architecture and a structure to generate this project. And the one interesting is the uh, little bit different thing between the general Maven project versus this one. There are the one funk YAML file here. So here is the uh, function name, Quarkus phone. You can actually name it whatever you need. And then uh, the namespace, each, well, this uh, indicated your actual namespace where you want to deploy your application on Kubernetes. And then here's the runtime Quarkus, and then you can select any other one, and I'm going to showcase the later. And the image is uh, once you package this application, and then the image, uh, the tag will be uh, auto-wired here. So the KN Funk command line actually use build pack, so one of the CNCF uh, project uh, to package and build package your application and once again containerize it and push it into your external container registry like a Docker Hub or a Quay.io or a Google uh, container registry, something like that. And then and lastly, uh, the build pack uh, command line, uh, the, the tools uh, to push this application to Kubernetes using uh, one of the Kubernetes manifestor, uh, which he already generated during the uh, command line execution. So here's the interesting stuff. So there are build map, which means that you can actually select uh, two different types of the builder. So one is JVM. So so traditionally, Java uh, create by code and running on JVM, and then this is a really, really bit heavy way to run uh, like a serverless platform like Amazon Lambda or uh, Google Function, and even Kubernetes K-native, because it's a, uh, Java was designed for uh, dynamic capability, which means once you package your Java code and then you can run any app server, it was awesome back in 1995 uh, over internet technology. But we changed the infrastructure from just a simple app server to immutable infrastructure, AKA Kubernetes, which means you just deploy uh, one single microservices at once and then scale out thousand pods in this one cluster. This is happening every single day. So if you, you still have the same behavior, like a dynamic behavior, like a, a parsing annotation, and a, uh, try to uh, interpret your descriptor and enable disable some feature. These all kinds of tasks are happening at runtime when you run your Java application using Java command line. So same working happening all the time, maybe 1,000 times, maybe 100,000 times. It's not uh, productive and not efficient. So that's why Quarkus get rid of that thing and then put in a ship into build time rather than runtime. And also the native comparison. So it's super fast and the small memory footprint you use based on ahead of time build strategy rather than uh, just in time build strategy uh, based on Java technology. And so Quarkus you can actually uh, packaging application as a native executable like a exe file in Windows server system or just Go program language. You don't need to uh, JVM any longer to run the Java application, but it's just pretty compact. So for example, you have one RESTful API application. It takes maybe uh, one second to start up time, but with the native compilation, it takes 10 milliseconds, almost maybe a uh, 100 times or 300 times faster than, and the memory footprint is uh, maybe uh, 80 uh, megabyte for memory footprint when you run the JVM application. But when you run native executable on GraalVM, it takes maybe uh, 4.5 megabyte as a memory footprint. So that's why uh, the Quarkus provide uh, native comparison and get rid of a lot of uh, repeatable tasks at runtime, which is really fit in serverless function architecture. Okay, so let's try to open this project uh, just to make sure uh, 
the sample application, how the sample application are generated. So here's my VS code. So a little bit dark here. Can you see the code? This is my quirk theme on VS code. So Funko YAML file, uh, let me try to a little bit bigger here. Okay. And then here is just the application. So function and uh, just input output is a JSON message, just very simple, just like a hello world stuff, but you're gonna use a JSON rather than just text string. And then here's one interesting stuff here, the function. So you probably know to uh, implement a RESTful API in Spring Boot using uh, uh, like uh, the request mapping or uh, something like that. And then Quarkus uh, provides uh, the funky extension, uh, aka is like a dependency. So this Quarkus funky extension allows developer to write a, one code and then deploy multiple serverless platform. So once you create a serverless function and then you can deploy multiple serverless platform, for example, Kubernetes Knative or Amazon Lambda or Azure Function or Google Function. You don't need to change the code. You just only edit it or update your configuration which is uh, like a target information. Here is Google, here is Amazon, here is Kubernetes on-prem, something like that. Because the lots of enterprise companies try to move forward to multi and hybrid cloud infrastructure and a strategy. So to uh, accomplish to that technology or strategy, so portability is a really uh, good uh, con consideration. So just imagine that the one of the big benefit or trace that you wanted to take the container packaging technologies, which is the will give you portability and immutability as well. So once you package in container image and you can run any infrastructure uh, running on Linux operating system or a Windows server system, you don't need to change that. This is a huge benefit of a container. So same thing. And then we, we the Quarkus actually provide the same capability with the uh, funky annotation and then so which is the funky annotation. This annotation will make your Java method as a serverless function and deploy it to uh, serverless platform. For example, when you deploy this serverless function to Kubernetes, it will automatically generate a KNAV YAML file, which includes some of the Kubernetes KNAV manifestor, like a, uh, build configuration or deployment configuration and uh, like a CR, something like that. That's it. And then here is the application properly here. So here is the, I want to ex export, if you have a multiple functions and then this time I'm going to expose this function. For example, you can actually deploy one function at a time to Amazon Lambda. So to do that, you need to specify that. So I think that's all. And then let me try to change a little bit uh, this configuration. So the current Quarkus community open source project uh, is uh, released last week, two, two, three. So let me try to use raised one because there are awesome feature here. And I change the bottom XML and I just save a file and then go back to function file. And then here is the Command line, you can actually use the Maven command line, Maven, Quarkus, and Dev. So this is the one of the great feature for developers. Uh, Quarkus, one of the uh, beauty of the Quarkus is live coding capability. So whenever you change the code, like in a loop development, Every single day, you have to change the code for bug fix or implement new capability or enhance like a performance issue. And then when you change the code, you need to review, recompile application, and then restart your runtime like a Spring Boot or embedded Tomcat or Netty, et cetera, and then retesting like a unit test or you can just go to web browser and then try to uh, check the capability or feature manually just whatever you prepare the way. And then once you're done, you 
uh, commit the code and push it into your GitHub repository or internal uh, Git repository. That's it. That's the inner of development. But if you could get rid of that boring but necessary job, like a rebuild, recompile, and repackaging thing, and the, the framework, like a Java framework, will take care of that burden for you automatically, it should be awesome. So Quarkus, that, we can call that live coding here. So as you see, uh, here is live coding activated. And one interesting here, the test paused, and then when you press R, it will be resume testing. So many, many enterprise architecture really, really uh, emphasize on test-driven development. And then whenever you create a new feature, you have to add a new unit test on your application project. But most people, most developers just skip that because I don't have enough time to add my test code because I need to more focus on uh, developing actual business app, business uh, function or capability. And I skip that, and because I'm, it's working on my local machine, and once you push that code into the, container, uh, the Git uh, repository, and then some of the developer on your team try to pull and clone and uh, try to add his or her feature with your application as a part of an integration test, sometimes it fail. It uh, should take uh, maybe half a day or one day to figure it out and fix the problem. That's why uh, the test-driven development is really uh, important to avoid that kind of potential issues. So Quarkus actually uh, solved that problem with that. So when you press D on your terminal window, I can have some, let me try to a little bit uh, smaller, okay. So here's your Quarkus dev UI. Uh, it shows the more visualized and graphical way uh, what happened on your runtime, for example. So you can put in a lot of dependency on your Maven project or Gradle. I just put in this library, I just put in this one, and then after three months, you cannot remember which libraries, which dependency are really necessary. Even sometimes you just copy from your team's uh, project and then try to add your own features and then you don't care about actually which dependency are really needed to, to develop your application. So this is a graphical way to find all uh, dependency here. So whenever you add a new dependency or a Quarkus side, we can call that extension, it will show here automatically. And one interesting thing is here is a config editor. So you can see all compilation. It's not only about application compilation. It's all also shows all compilation which are running on runtime, like an infrastructure layer. So you can find here, we're going to use a packaging type. Legacy char is already defined by default, and a lot of stuff here. And then here is the, you can actually see the open terminal. And then when you click on test running, and it uh, automatically run your unit test. And then whenever you change the code, it's automatic retesting. I mean, you can continue testing. You don't need to uh, maybe verify or somehow the CI/CD pipeline should be uh, shouldn't be triggered whenever you change the code. So let's try to uh, call the endpoint uh, something like that. I'm going to use like an encode, like a, this is JSON format. So like. Uh, Message uh, key and a parameter like a welcome to Quarkus session at oh, summit. Okay, and I'm going to use the HTTP tool and uh, the local is the default port 8080. And then I think this is done. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, welcome Quarkus session and ops as summit. And then when you go back to uh, here, and then you can actually change anything. So for example, an output message, and then maybe you can just a simple 
那个 test 呃 Daniel my name， 我就 save file and then back to the here and just echoing。And then now you can see the the different result. But in the meantime, I I don't actually try to recompile, repackaging, rebuild, and the re restart the runtime. So this automatically stop, restart, recompile uh, by Quarkus Framer. So for developer perspective, you don't need to care about that any longer. And the one interesting here when you go to terminal window, and then you gotta fail the test contain uh, continue testing. Because when you go to uh, test unit, here's my uh, two test uh, unit tests here. So like a hello, and then uh, something, the hello message based on cloud events. So this is the expected result. But actually, my application function is working, as you see when I call HTTP call. But your test is actually failed. But if you don't have any continuous testing uh, capability inside your Java framework, maybe you could just skip that. Oh, it's working. Application is good. And then move on to the next feature, or just commit it and push it to the container uh, GitHub repository. So this is maybe uh, some of the potential issue. So you can actually uh, quick fix that problem. So I'm going to go back to uh, the function, and then I'm going to try to use the default one today. OK, so this is a really simple thing. And I just make sure that my generated project is working. So I just run this one, and then just find that it's working. So uh, and why don't you try to add a new function? Because I just change my. Uh, one of the methods, some people a little bit doubt it. Oh, yeah, maybe why don't you try to add a new class or new method, and then it'll be still working like a live coding. So let me try to showcase that thing. So to do that, uh, let me try to uh, add a new function here. Uh, to do that, uh, maybe I wanted to. Uh, okay, let's try to deploy. Okay, here we go. So let's try to deploy this function first, and then I'm gonna change the function, and then add the secure security capability. So back, I'm gonna stop the my local environment. And the next step, the second and the last command line km func, and deploy. And I'm gonna set it on my external container registry. I'm gonna use quay.io. You can actually use a Docker Hub, whatever you need. And uh, I'm going to set namespace. So here is my OpenShift cluster, which is based on Kubernetes race version. So here's my namespace here, the Quarkus Fung dash SEC. There's no resource here. I really didn't deploy anything at this moment. And then let's try to uh, make sure that, uh, so we are already same uh, the exact namespace here. So Q namespace here. It should be a lot of namespace will be shown up. Okay. So I just uh, stay in the Quarkus dash funk dash sec. So it's the right place. And then I'm going to use KN funk deploy. And just set it up by container registry, create.io, then O3, and namespace, Quarkus Funk, uh, CC, and then I put in the burbers. So once, when you run this command line, it actually triggers the build pack, uh, which is one of the CNCF project. It's the first of all, uh, this build pack try to packaging uh, build packaging this application like a Maven compile or Maven packaging something like that. After that, uh, containerize this application like a container image and then push it into that container registry I specify in command line. And then uh, it's try to deploy Kubernetes. As you see, KNAB serving is become ready. When you go back to top, uh, our VS Code and go to Funk YAML file, and now you can see 
namespace is automatically replaced based on from command line and the image, uh, the tag and image stream, etc. When you go to target directory and then there are quarkers and then uh, some of the uh, resources here. So all about the uh, related resources automatically generated. And back to the terminal. Now we have new uh, the route URL, the endpoint to function. Let's copy that. And then back to the uh, approach to terminal. Yeah, now we got a new uh, Quarkus application here. And you go to view logs. Oh, it's too, maybe too small. And then here's the Quarkus version. And then here is the JVM running on time. And then here is the uh, little bit not good resolution, but it's a 0.85 second to start up. It's a pretty uh, faster than any other traditional Java stack still on JVM. And then back to the top of the view. And then it's already terminating because the K Kubernetes KNAVE have uh, scaled down to zero configuration, which is a default 30 second. So if you don't have any uh, request, like on-demand request to the serverless function uh, in 30 second, it will be scaled down to zero automatically. It's already gone. And then let's try to hit this uh, container pod, and then it will automatically scale up, just like a serverless behavior, like a core start, like Amazon Lambda. So back to the here. So the same, but I'm going to copy the endpoint here. And let's try to defer on like a commit session with cube. And I just uh, hit fire the endpoint, and as you see, the, your pods automatically start here. And then it's already running. And then back to here, uh, we got to have a new output. So this is a really uh, easy uh, for developer to create your function project and deploy. I just used two command line uh, for this demo. And then, but in the meantime, I spent a little bit more time to explain uh, how it works and uh, behind the scene what happened inside of that. But still, I used the two command line. And then I'm going to deploy one more thing, but to make a differentiated two different application, I'm going to change the, uh, the uh, icon here. There are label, push IO, and runtime. Equal quarkers. Okay, so now we have one uh, serverless function based on JVM, and the other one is so I'm going to secure this application back to the here, and go to application. So, so quarkers actually uh, have a Kubernetes uh, extension, which means when you add, when you use Kubernetes like a resource like a config command or a secret, which is a really good feature to uh, secure your application pod. For example, you want you don't want to store like a sensitive information like a database username and password on your application. You need to get rid of that thing from your application and uh, ship it to your config command or a secret. So this is a really good uh, security. Uh, strategy, but in order today, you maybe generate your own YAML file and to bind from application to Kubernetes resources. But Quarkus actually provided that capability on your Java application. You don't need to generate uh, the boring YAML file. Sometimes you miss some indentation and you ruined all the Kubernetes thing. So, so to do that, first of all, uh, I'm going to add a new uh, Quarkus extension. Uh, you can actually search cube and there's cube config and I just edit it. It's automatically pull down all dependency. And when you go back to uh, Palm XML, and then you can find here, uh, all right, here is a new extension automatically downloaded. And then back to the application. And let's try to add something like a config uh, property and the name. It's like a username, and I'm going to set it up a uh, string variable, like a username. And let's try to add another one. Good name. It's password. Password. 
and the, or the string variable, like a password. It's pretty simple. And I'm going to create a new function, something like that. And then the default function name is equal to your method name. So you can actually specify uh, the default function name, but I'm going to is a secret uh, function name. And then uh, the public method. And then uh, return is like a map type. String and string. And uh, function name, like a, let's try the same thing. And then And create a new hash map. Uh, hash map. Uh, map and new hash map here. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, the new variable here, map to put. And one is like, a, let's say the key is a DB username, something like the username. And the value is username. And then put in the, on the password, the same thing. Like, let's say db password and password here. And then return the map. Pretty cool. Then, okay. Uh, oh, I'm just here. So it looks good. Import that thing and yeah, looks good. And then we are gonna to use this credential, uh, the method, uh, the function name. So to do that, go to application property. I change that, and then I'm gonna use the secret which he already existing, or you will create a secret on Kubernetes. So this is the terminal window, and then. When I go back to my OpenShift cluster, there's a secret menu for developer. And then here, you already create the default secret. And I'm going to create, uh, create a new secret here. So the generic uh, is uh, the secret name DB credentials. And then just a read it all, a username admin, and the password secret just for the test. And I just create that, and then back to the uh, here. And then now you can have the DB credential. And you can actually see that the, what is actual value here, the password secret, and the username admin. And then back to the here, and then DB credential. I just copy. Uh, I'm not going to do a uh, type of thing today. Back to the application. And then here to add a new secret uh, enable. So this compilation allows developer to bind your Java application to remote Kubernetes secret. So first of all, I'm going to make the enable this feature. And then the second thing is I'm going to uh, specify the secret name, like a DB credential that I created just a little bit ago. And uh, back to the uh, funk YAML file, uh, let's try to change that function name, like a SEC, put into that. And here's the image name and the function name, easy name. So just this, that's it. And then back to terminal window, func deploy. And then I'm going to use the same uh, registry, so I don't need to change that. And just barbers. Oh, yeah, different here. So use that deploy and barbers. So in the meantime, let's try to uh, just quick show, create uh, to help to what kind of op uh, what kind of option create type here. You have more. So as you see, the runtime you can actually use uh, Go, Node.js, Python, and Quarkus, and Rust, Spring Boot, and TypeScript. And also uh, there are uh, the uh, template. So today we are using HTTP, just call like a, the request response, but you can actually generate uh, cloud event messaging processing uh, when you generate serverless function. So sometimes 
you needed to uh, deploy serverless function with the uh, event-driven architecture, like a backend Kafka server or something like that, uh, with the, using cloud events. Cloud event is uh, showcase uh, common messaging format because some of the developer wants to define JSON format for uh, event-driven messaging, but some of them not uh, using JSON format, like a binary or like a product bulb, something like that. So there are a lot of different types of messaging format to communicate uh, among the event-driven application platforms to avoid that kind of problem, the cloud events actually provide uh, the standard events format. So back to the terminal, it's already deployed here. And then uh, go to here, so we have a new uh, SEC, uh, the new format uh, serverless function, which already included capability or security. So it's almost done, almost terminating. Let's try to give it a more, like a few seconds, uh, it's totally uh, scaled down to zero. And then we're gonna hit the route URL and, and then it will automatically uh, start up like a uh, serverless behavior. And so it's just done, and then click on route URL, and then back to here, you work the application automatically start. And then you gotta have uh, the return uh, JSON format, like a DB password, screen, and DB username admin. So very simple, this is a not real uh, enterprise use case I have to admit, but I'm gonna try to showcase how to easy, how easy to generate a serverless function project still using Java framework and then deploy just two command line. In the meantime, you can actually edit it, uh, security capability to use Kubernetes uh, config or uh, secret. You can actually add a lot of stuff. So let me try to uh, give it a sh try the one more thing. Go back to here and then you can change that, like a try to new function name. I'm gonna change it. I'm not gonna change any source code, but uh, put in the, the new function name native, and then image name native, and then the builder is not gonna JVM, but using native. And then back to the here, and then just one more time deploy. It will take a little bit longer than previous Build because native compilation, it takes a little bit longer because it print everything related to uh, libraries and uh, dependency and capability in single executable file. And after that, containerize that. So native compilation and native executable, uh, you don't need to use every single time for your application development because it depends on the, what kinds of workloads and uh, application pattern you needed to implement for serverless, and it should be good with native compilation. But you don't need to compile this native compilation thing on your local machine every single time. In reality, you just put this on your CI CD pipeline or GitHub Action or your DevOps pipeline, and so developer only focus on live coding and JVM stuff, and once they finish that, just uh, trigger your pipeline, and then that pipeline will execute the native compilation. But so, but there are small differences JVM and native compilation. For example, if you bring uh, the, ex the third party. Uh, dependency or library into Quarkus, it could be working on JVM, but it couldn't be working on native compilation because there are some Java reflection uh, issues. Because it, so that's why the Spring Native actually tried to fix the problem. And then, if you have some experience, attend the Spring One in September, and they have uh, announced the roadmap to release Spring Native and Spring 6 and uh, Spring uh, 3 boot framework at end of next year and then some of the beta or maybe beginning of next year or middle of next year. But there are a lot of stuff uh, they have to uh, figure it out. Okay, so let's uh, keep this on and I'm gonna back to my slide deck to wrap up today and uh, I'm gonna 
back to the, my window here. OK, I have four minutes. All right. So, so once again, Quarkus is an uh, open source project, and then uh, a little bit more focus on cloud native and Kubernetes native uh, Microsoft application development, and uh, pretty much focus on serverless and uh, functions. And then with the Quarkus, you can actually pretty easy get starting with the uh, serverless function development, writing code and the packaging, and it will bring to your serverless platform. I just use the Kubernetes today, but you can actually use Amazon Lambda and then a lot of stuff. So you can actually uh, select the DR language platform if you have some experience like a Go and like a Node.js or Lust. And then here is the uh, funky extension uh, supports uh, serverless platform like a Amazon Lambda here, and then uh, Google function and Azure function. So when you use the Amazon Lambda, you can have a native comparison capability as well. But Google and Microsoft Azure function, uh, they don't support native comparison at this moment. And I heard there are some plans uh, in the future, but not at this moment. And then as I already showed today, the Kubernetes client and the Kubernetes config and the secret, a lot of stuff. You don't need to uh, create your own YAML file to uh, define your Kubernetes resources or manifester because the Quarkus, when you print your Java code, it's automatically generate that YAML file for you. And here's my YouTube channel, Bini URL Daniel TV. I already uh, created a lot of the technical videos. Uh, just like uh, today video, and then not just Kubernetes. I, I just uh, deploy uh, this function to Kubernetes, and then I just change this just this tiny of uh, computation and just run to uh, Amazon Lambda or Azure function. It's a pre, uh, like a just 10 minute video, and there are a lot of stuff, uh, technical video and tutorial. Uh, feel free to subs subscribe to my YouTube channel, and. Just uh, let me know if you have any question, uh, technical demo, or open source technology, including CNCF stuff. So if you are more interested in Quarkus journey, here is a binning URL, try-quarkus. is 100% uh, free, uh, self-paced uh, learning portal, and the code.quarkus.io, the code generator, uh, similar thing to uh, Spring Initializer. And here is the uh, IDC report. Uh, this is a uh, uh, showcase the performance comparison data uh, between Spring Boot and Quarkus, like a throughput and response time and the memory footprint, etc. So I recently uh, published uh, with my colleague uh, the new ebook. Is you can actually download the free, and uh, it's a uh, Quarkus for Spring developers. So Spring has a lot of uh, use cases like. Uh, data transaction like a JPA, and then uh, persistent and RESP API evangelism, et cetera. We can compare the between that thing, so it will be helpful, some like uh, practice. And uh, thanks for joining today. And I'm going to back to, uh, just give me one second. OK, it's just run. And back to the t uh, window, and here's the native. And try to click on. It will scale up the Quarkus uh, application, and then go to view logs. Let's find that. OK, here we go. So it's a native comparison, and then here is uh, 80 milliseconds to start up. So previously, we have a seven, uh, like a 0.75 or 0.85 second, but it's 80 milliseconds. It's almost 10 times faster than uh, startup time. OK, so thanks for attending today and uh, have a good rest of your summit.